All right, so we're going to talk about Napoleon Hill and my dad. I love going the extra mile, by the way. Every day, I'm answering emails. Every day. First thing in the morning, last thing at night, I'm checking in. Right? How can I serve? How can I help? I send out little extra emails to make sure everybody gets their shit. You know? I I just find it useful. I find it fun. But what I find lovely is this. My dad. My dad had a little tree farm. It was like three acres. And when I was a boy, he sold rhododendrons. God, they were beautiful. He had probably about an acre and a half of his three-acre tree farm planted out with him. And my dad was a smart, smart guy. He went the extra mile. He thought things through. I picked up a lot of good characteristics and qualities from him. I could space the rows of trees so that they were like 24 inches apart because the lawnmower was 14 inches. And he figured if he makes a swipe up and a swipe back, that's 28 inches, he's got four inches of overlap. He's guaranteed to two and two easy swipes to mow the grass between each row. Brilliant. By the way, obvious. But a lot of people miss the obvious. More on that later. But my dad taught me a couple things. He loved what he did. And when he stopped loving it, he stopped doing it. A lot of people just persist. They push. They're in the habit of pushing, thinking that's persistence. That is not what Neville meant by persistence, by the way. But we're in such a habit in this culture of pushing, even though we, when we no longer love doing something, we keep making it happen, right? I don't feel it real to make anything happen. I feel it real to experience who I would be if my wish were fulfilled. Write that down. I don't feel it real to make anything happen. I feel it real to experience right now who I would be, how I would experience the world if my wish were true. And that magical moment changes everything. But I appear to digress. Because my dad would fall in love with his plants, with his place, with his people. He didn't just go the extra mile with the people that bought his plants. Uh... He let them become friends and family. I can't tell you how many burgers and hot dogs I had at strangers' houses. Because we'd be going down the road and he'd say, Hey, there's Jimmy's place. I sold Jimmy those trees. There he is. Let's stop by and say hi real quick. And next thing you know, my dad's talking to Jimmy and he's telling him, Hey, look, let me show you how to prune this a little better. Right? You know, I realize nobody ever showed you how to do this. And I didn't because I was busy that day when you bought them. And he'd show Jimmy how to prune them. Actually, he'd probably do about half the pruning himself, right? That's That was my dad, right? And while we're there, Jimmy'd give us a beer. Well, he'd give my dad a beer. He'd give me a burger, hot dog, some tater salad. And then we'd go down the road. We'd be going fishing someplace. And sure enough, my dad would see somebody else. We'd stop. And uh, come on, Grizz. Hey, let me show you what happened since you were here last time. I've been pruning him like you said. That was about three years ago. Hey, tell your boy to go over there and get something to eat. So, all right. I can't tell you how many times that happened growing up. Pretty much every weekend, it seems like. But my dad loved his people. He loved his product. He loved his people. And you know, the last time I was in Pennsylvania, that was like 10, 12 years ago, uh, I had the honor to drive around with my dad. He said, I went back, I had to sort out some visa issues to get back here to Australia so I could stay here, yada, yada, yada. So I go to the airport, my buddy picks me up, my old police partner, stay at his place for a couple days. Another old friend lets me stay at her place. And then my dad. God, I got to hang out with my dad. We went and we saw the Muppet movie and uh, we're just driving around and sure enough I'm seeing places, places with trees, trees that he sold. And I'm thinking about the times we stopped there and the people that I met. And of course the yummy burgers and the hot dogs and stuff like that, the tater salad. You see, it's stories, not statements. I am a millionaire. Who cares? You don't. You might feel fun to do that. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. Uh, whatever. That guy's creepy. Whatever. See, statements, they really... It's not the same as an utterance. A true story is an utterance. 
I had not been making statements about my dad. I've been uttering about him. It wouldn't shock me if the word utterance, as in spontaneous res geste statement, not really statement, wow, experience expressed. I think about a cow has udders, right? And I think about when I make an utterance, uh, I got a call with one of the remarkable people today. That's one of the benefits that the people have in that program that got the one version of it. We do monthly calls. And uh, I can't tell you how many times I get on or get off a call and it's like, wow. Yeah, I just love the spark that shows up on the other end. Or how many times I get to tell someone I love you. A big love and blessings to you. It's a pretty cool lifestyle. Living by utterance. And that doesn't mean words have power. Words are an expression of you. Doesn't mean you need people. My dad had this massive referral network. Everybody talked good about him. Because of the good that he shared. The good that he gave. And I'm sure there were people that didn't like him. Doesn't matter, does it? Because those who know, know. And here's what I want you to do. This is how I want you to play with this today. Imaginal experience leads physical experience. I remember being a little boy and feeling, I want to be like my dad. That was my desire. That was like the first son. I, I want to be like my dad. And then the warmth shows up. The liveliness of it shows up. The experience of it shows up. And you know, that started whenever I, did, I, did, I started up my own little weed business, right? Not as in smoke, as in like pulling weeds out of people's gardens. And so I, I put little index cards in their mailboxes. And I was always booked. <laughs> Made good money for a little kid on welfare. Got to buy ice cream. Got to buy a steak once in a while. That was fun. We didn't have that stuff when I grew up. Meanwhile, uh, I got to do it when I taught martial arts, fall in love with what I do, fall in love with who I teach. I keep track of some of those people nowadays. I see them on Instagram, Facebook, students of mine from 40 years ago, just noticing how are they blessing the world. See, I want you to stop thinking in terms of numbers and start thinking from I want you to start experiencing qualities there's a warmth when you nail this you get how much I love my wife my dog my car my duck can you hear my duck he just flew over anyhow have a lovely day if you got gold a couple suggestions the first one and this is really vital easymanifestingmethods.com if you go there, sign up, make sure you click on the confirmation link we send to you. If you don't see it in your inbox, check spam or Gmail or a spam or promotions, whatever it is. Gmail especially is a way of hiding good stuff. Drag it to your inbox, click the link, you're good to go. You'll get the seven lessons, one a day for seven days. Plus, you'll get the daily email. I love those. Ah, start changing your life in less than 15 minutes a day. Next if you want to dive deep, if you want to make this your backbone, the backbone of all we do is manifestingmasterycourse.com. It's that 90-day program, 97 bucks. The amount of time it takes you to listen to this podcast, you can do a, do a lesson. And here's the big difference, because people say, hey, I don't need to get it. I get stuff for, from you for free every day. You do. See, for me, this is a dance. Manifestingmasterycourse.com is a journey. It's an adventure. It's a road trip taking you from one place to another over the course of 90 days in about 10-15 minutes a day again. I'm a massive fan of that because I want you to play. I don't want you to just listen passively. I want you to play a lot because play is fun. At least I think so. I used to listen a lot. Now I play a lot. I listen a little, play a lot with everything. And finally, sharing is caring. Oh, gosh darn it. <laughs> sharing is. I think about the gifts my dad shared with me without even knowing it. Then I think about the gifts he did share with me. 
I remember actually reading Napoleon Hill in my dad's truck as we go from here to there and talking with him about going the extra mile. And I didn't realize at the time, he didn't just go the extra mile. He did it out of love. If going the extra mile is, is, is an activity, love is who you are. And if that activity comes from the love that you are, it will never feel like you're going the extra mile. It'll feel like a surrender, a dance of possibility, of a, of a lovely char-grilled hamburger in the summertime. Have a great day. See ya.